How's it going guys? Dealing with a few things in the garden today and I'm feeling a little beat. Um, first thing is not that terrible, but I've got some seeds right here I'm gonna direct sow. These are Bells of Ireland and I thought that I had time to direct sow these yesterday and it's been pouring down rain non-stop. Um, so these Bells of Ireland seeds I have had sitting in water for uh, 48 hours. I think it's recommended to soak them for like 12 hours, up to 24 at most, but they've been sitting here for 20, for yeah, like 48 hours now. So I need to get these guys in the ground. Um, the Bells of Ireland that I had out here did not fare very well due to some random night that got below 32 degrees so that was kind of upsetting we didn't even have it on the forecast it just like happened instantly it was supposed to be like a cold of like 34 so it was a little close and i thought everything was going to be fine and then it just kept getting colder and colder and in the middle of the night at some point it hit below 32. so i've lost a couple plants and then i'm being attacked by either slugs or pincher bugs right now i'm not exactly sure which one it is i'm pretty sure it might be slugs so i need to get on top of that but first i'm going to direct so this i have i think like 10 slots for the bells of ireland oh my gosh look how pretty all the daffodils are behind me they've been so much fun um so i'm gonna get these guys i'm gonna get these seeds in the ground i i sowed i've got so many soaking i didn't even mean to soak i soaked the whole packet okay i didn't mean to but i did so i'm just gonna find places in the garden for these to go um that way i can enjoy some of them in the like landscape and then also use some of them for cutting so let's just put these guys in the ground and then i'll show you the damage that i'm dealing with okay so i have a couple in here they're not doing great this one i don't think is gonna make it this one's not even buried anymore maybe it will make it let's try <laughs> i'm gonna rebury this guy i don't even know why this was sitting on top of the ground. I don't know if it's gonna make it or not. This center part right here where it got leggy feels a little mushy, but I'm gonna just try. So, I'm just gonna pop that in the ground there. If it works, then great. If not, no harm, no foul. So I'm gonna pop seeds in all of these holes, even this one where there is something already growing. Let's see. And I'm gonna do like three seeds in here per hole. Okay, now I'm gonna just go pop the remaining few seeds that I have in here into the landscape. So I think I want them maybe in this bed. You can see the scabiosa, the rose, euphorbia, I have some eurygium back there. That's a hibiscus that should come back. But maybe if I but maybe if I get a couple seeds back there behind the hibiscus, we'll have some height, some green behind. It's got like red foliage and red flowers. That might be really pretty. So let's do that. I think that that'll be really nice back there. Once the rose gets about this tall this year and then the hibiscus getting about this tall and the bells of Ireland, We'll get about this tall maybe about here actually that'll be really pretty the green spikes oh my gosh there is a helicopter a plane okay so i'm gonna go grab what i need out of the shed for the pest control that i'm doing <sighs> super frustrating um this is what i'm using this is the bonide slug and or bug and slug killer by bonide um i'm gonna use this i've had really good success with it last year i was able to find this i got this from andrew's seed actually i bought this two years ago from andrew's seed this was like 40 bucks and there's still a little bit left in here um but when i saw this little guy local locally i decided to grab this i don't remember how much this one was uh, maybe like 12 bucks or something like that but it's supposed to kill slugs snails cutworm and earwigs so i'm pretty sure i'm dealing with either slugs or earwigs not sure which one but this will take care of both the problems and so it tells you to 
Use it's for uses around vegetables, fruit trees, berries, ornamentals, grasses, kills earwigs, cutworms, slugs, and snails. Easy to use pelleted form, contains spinosad, and it lures the slugs, snails, and other insects um, from their hiding places. And there will be no slime trails, and it lasts up to four weeks. So that should be great. Let me open this up all the way. Should not have done this with one hand. So application directions is scatter the bait granules on the soil around or near the plant to protect it with a hand or powder operator broadcaster granulator or drop spreader um, to ensure uniform coverage. Apply bait evenly approximately half to one pound per 1,000 square feet for smaller areas uh, do 0 0.075 to 0 0.105 ounce. Do not place in piles. Scatter the bait around the perimeter of the area providing a protection barrier for the pest entering the area. If the ground is dry, wet it before applying bait. The product works best when the soil is moist, but with little or no standing water, um, which is great because we just got rain. So we should be all good there. Apply no more than three times in any 30 day period. Apply at a higher rate if the infestation is severe, which I'm going to say it's pretty severe because they've eaten quite a few of my plants. Um, oh, for seedlings, spread bait around the base of the stem. For trees and shrubs, spread bait around the base of the tree. For smaller pots, treat around the base of the plants to be protected. In a greenhouse, scatter the bait in the pots of the plants being damaged around the pots or on the greenhouse benches. Um, Evening is the best time to apply the bait as pests uh, travel and feed mostly at night and early mornings. Treat perimeters of areas. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead. This has a nice little, it has a sprinkle top and it also has, if you wanna get a larger amount out, um, I'm gonna close that side and I'm gonna use this and I'm just gonna go sprinkle it a little bit in each one of the planting holes. Let me show you what that's like right now. It's not good. We're in the row crop area. You can see some of my stuff got taken out by a frost that I really wasn't expecting. This is all my gomfrina and I'm a little bit heartbroken over it. Um, there might be a few that might survive that might pull through, but it's not looking. It's not looking great. That one's fine. That one obviously is not fine. And that's how really a lot of these are, are just absolutely just destroyed. We'll see if they come back, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Um, and what's funny is this was where the bugs were coming the most. You can actually see that they ate most of the leaves off of this one here. They ate all the leaves off. There's two marks on some of the other ones around here. So I think the ones that might survive, like this guy here, I'm just gonna take a tad bit and sprinkle that in there, just like that. So, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of that bait back in there that got on there. And that should help protect this one that I think might survive. This one here might survive. The back one definitely won't. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit there. And I'm just gonna follow along anywhere that there's ones that I think might actually make it and sprinkle a tad bit inside those holes. I think that's it. I think three, three might make it. Um, Scabiosa, some of these are being eaten. You can see here, there are marks like that. These have been ripped off. It could be birds, could be pests. I really don't want to chance it, so I'm just going to sprinkle in all of these holes just a tad bit, especially because slugs and earwigs could totally be living underneath this fabric. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they were underneath here. So they have easy access directly to a plant and then they can go directly into hiding. So each one of these is just going to get just a tad bit and I'm just gonna go down this row and do this. And then also my poppies need it too. Okay, so that side's done. Let's go over to this side and we'll get these all taken care of. Uh -uh. 
So I'm not really having a problem much of anywhere else except over here at my poppies. I'm pretty sure something is munching on these guys here. So same thing, I'm just gonna come through each one of these areas. If it lands on a leaf, let's pull that off. I just wanna make sure that all of these get just a little something to help take care of that. You can see even some of these poppies didn't fare too well to a cold night. Oh, such a bummer. Just really wasn't expecting a night below 32 degrees. And here we are with nights below 32. Everything else looks fine. The asters are looking great. They're actually putting on growth. The, um, what is this? Eurangium, yeah, the Eurangium is looking good. You can see it's putting on new growth. It does have some bronzing color and that's okay. It's been cold. The sweet peas are still mad at me. They're still broke. Uh, that's all right though. But snapdragons are looking great. I do need to come in and pinch some of these guys. I will maybe when it warms up just a tad bit more and I'll go over a video of how easy that is. Actually, I could show you guys right now. So look, here's one and to pinch, you're gonna go up. These are its um, cotyledons, which are the leaves that come from the seed. And then you have one, two, and then you go up a third set and then you just pinch that. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put this in the soil right here and this will actually grow roots and turn into a whole nother plant. So that's how you pinch snapdragons. Um, you definitely want to pinch your snapdragons back if possible. You can see there's one actually here that I did pinch. So what happens is if you pinch them, they start to branch out and each one of these like branches right here will turn into a branch and produce even more flowers. So snapdragons are one of the plants that you do want to pinch back a little bit. And then you can see my status here also has turned a bronzy color because of the cold nights. But that'll be fine. As we start to warm up, they'll be good. Uh, everything else is looking fine. Just that one night of, like, I think we hit 31 degrees. Took a couple things. And then slugs and the earwigs have totally found my cut flower garden. So I'm going to take care of these guys. I'll probably reply, reapply this every like two weeks um we're due to get more rain in like four days or something like that we'll see if that actually stays on the forecast and we have one night that's going to be 33 degrees um and i'll keep an eye on that that's at the end of our 10 day um and if we do get close to that 32 degrees then i will go ahead and i'll come out here and i'll cover a few of these things so that is going to be it for this video guys that was just simple a few things that i needed to get done out here I'm going to hold off on planting a few other things, um, but let me give you another update on these daffodils. Look at that. There are so many of them in here. They're so, so beautiful. Oh, look, I just noticed two, the tulips over here. Look, how pretty is that? That is so gorgeous. And then we have the one big one there and another one back there. I just, oh. These are so, so gorgeous. I can't believe that we got tulips again. Oh, and then look, more of the fritillaria have really started to come into their own. Lots and lots of, lots and lots of little blooms coming out. Even over here, the snakehead fritillaria is definitely a must in your garden for next year, if you can find them. Daffodils are so, so pretty. Some of these double ones. And look at this. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. Thanks for coming along with me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.